Okay. Says so the human population. The leader is the only mortal among them. A very old man named Father Florin, and he has had the uh, he's had the pleasure of meeting Father Florin before when he was on uh, a mission. Uh, business with a loose alliance with human members of the cult of Ith. And Ashitiru okay. tried very hard to sway Father Florin away from this death god that he knows will give him nothing in the end. His whole life, his whole human life of servitude will come to nothing when Kimash bestows no eternity upon him. But Father Florin was resolute and returned to town. Okay. Says the second district is the river district, which is the public face of Dominas. This is probably the only district, he says, if you visit, that you will be allowed into openly. He says, this is where Grigore Albescu has his keep, and that is where Omte is currently serving as a blacksmith. He says that Grigore is a loose ally of the cult of Ith, but uh, not a very steadfast one. So when Gendred took over the cult, Omte went there under the guise of doing work for Grigori, which would not have seemed out of place. But Ashatiru suspects that Omte is going to try to throw in with Grigori against the cult. He's thinking that Omte was looking for pretense to leave the cult, get away from Gendred, without, you know, by, by allying himself with a powerful vampire, so Gendred couldn't just blow him to dust. Yeah. He says the other three districts, there's a temple district, which is where the uh, the living population worships. Uh, that's overseen by a night hag, whose name he doesn't know, another high priestess of Kimosh. Uh, there's a tomb district, which is, he, as far as he knows, overrun with zombies and skeletons and other low-level form of undead. The, the, the mindless hordes of undead. And, okay. uh... He's not sure what sort of organization, if any, is to be found in the Tomb District. Alright. And then there's Dominas Tower, which is overseen by a lich, uh, whose name Ashatiru knows. Zezona Kristoff. And he has tried many times to make contact with Zezona for usually in terms of magical curiosity but so far as he can tell nobody's seen this person for centuries and there's no actual indication that she is even that she even exists okay he says if you seek to travel to Dominas you would be best to stay within the public districts not go poking around where you're not wanted but if you describe your quest to Omte, that you would po probably find him receptive. Okay. And so you spend the whole eight hours, and he describes this just horrible place to you, where the undead rule and the living uh, work as slaves for a god that does not regard them with uh, with anything. The basic tenet of the religion of Kimash is that. Life, the gift of life, is wasted on mortals. It's wasted on living. And only the undead truly can appreciate life, for theirs stretches out forever. Okay. And over the course of the night, Ashutiru sees that his uh, description of this place is not particularly pleasing to you. Oh, no, it isn't. <laughs> and at the end, he says, well, but... with any luck, you'll be able to go there and do what it is you need to do. Indeed. Um, you've given me more than enough information. I'm sure my allies will be able to make use of it. What do you tell him about Baba Yaga's hut? Um, uh, I'll I'll give him the uh, I'll give him the details on the uh, on the deal that we struck. He asks, "What manner of?" negotiation did you have with her? Why did she so willingly come to the table to treat with you? <laughs> I'm thinking that blowing away three of her uh, three of her enslaved minions and forcing her to blow away the fourth had a hand in it. And Ashatiru laughs. He says, that is 
the problem with mortals, and make no mistake, she is a mortal. At their hearts, they are cowards. Mortality they fear more than anything. A show of force on her own turf that you were stronger than she was, and she bends to your beckoning. She says, but you've made the choice to overcome that deficiency, Khalil. And he nods with approval. <laughs> Zok. Or Zook, or whatever. Zook. Zook. <laughs> you go to Kiska. Yeah. You go to your little dive tavern down Sorry. There. Sorry, uh -huh. Brick Road. I, the last I got was that... Baba Yaga is mortal. That's the last I got. I'm sorry. Oh, he said that all mortals are cowards. That they fear mortality above all other things. And that by making a show of force inside the hut, Baba Yaga was afraid of you, and that's why she treated so willingly. But then he applauded you for overcoming your deficiency. For making the choice to not be a mortal. To be something more. And then I moved over to Zook. Yeah, no big deal. So yeah, you go up in your tavern, and mm -hmm. Nal Talos is in there. Does he comment on my seasoned looks? He does not. Alright, fuck him then. Um, <laughs> uh, Zook will, uh, you know, go over to his uh, corner and make his acquaintance and uh, ask him if he would uh, entertain me for some uh, more information. Is so curious, are you, Zook? I'm a curious little gnome. So, so what shall we talk about? And he I'm in search waves over some ale. I'm in search of a and refresh my memory. Man, I'm um, Umti um, 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 yeah. Is that a man? Is that a man? Yeah, Umte is a man. Okay, Umte. I'm in search of a I'm in search of a man named Umte. I have reason to believe he's in a land called Dominas. And maybe under the servitude of someone named Gregory uh, Albezquo. Bez I don't know if I'm saying that right. Then all shakes his head and says, The names Omte and Gregore are not familiar to me. He says, But Dominos. I would be very curious as how you came by that knowledge. Oh, I've been poking my nose in some pretty dark corners of the world. And unfortunately, i got to do that some more, it sounds like. There's no darker corner than Dominos. So I've heard. Well, actually, no, I haven't heard yet. <laughs> well, he says the there's the great wealth and treasure there, you know. Hey, if I can get my hands on some wealth and treasure in the meantime, uh, while I'm there, I won't say no to that. He says you wouldn't be the first to try, that's for sure. Certainly not going to try to get myself killed in the process, though. I've come to value life. I won't say more, but at least as much as treasure. He says, then there's nothing for you in Dominos, my friend. Well, it may seem counterintuitive, but my life is very much to, very much bound to uh, business I have to do in Dominos. Do you know how to get there? My understanding is it's not exactly of this world. He shakes his head. But he says that over the years, there have been a couple members of the Guild of Shadows who sought it out for various reasons. Are these members of the Guild still around, or did they disappear? He says, nope, we have had no contact with them since they embarked on their journey. He gives you their names. I don't actually have fantasy name generator open right now, but I can... <laughs> How many of them have half-orc names? Half-orcs are dumb... So what are you asking about Dominos? Um. Uh, if he doesn't know exactly where it is, does he know of any way of possibly fig like? Does he know wh who these members of the guild who are looking for it, where they start looking, what contacts they may have had? He knows that Dominos is on the Shadowfell, but is all across the ocean from here. Um, he knows a couple of Shadowfell crossings, but only in the deserts. He tells you the 
identities of two elven thieves, members of the guild long ago, uh, who were old acquaintances of his that left seeking the treasure of Dominas. He gives you the names, let's see here, Jorian and Dadon. And they were sand elves? Yes, both of them. And it's been more than a human lifetime since they left. Who knows if that matters and <laughs> whatever the hell Dominos is. Um, hmm. Really trying to really need to figure out a way to find this place. Uh, so any advice you can give me other than because if these guys have been gone for more than a human lifetime. It says, unfortunately, my friend, we have reached the end of my knowledge on this topic. He says, but if you manage to discover the fates of my elven compatriots from long, long ago, says, the guild would pay very dearly for that knowledge. I'll, of course, uh, inquire about them if I do manage to find my way to this place and uh, see if I can track down their whereabouts. Uh, thank you for your time. And you leave without even drinking the ale that he ordered for you? Oh, no, I would drink the ale that he ordered for me. Okay, make con save. <laughs> uh, Taryn. Yep. Researching in your library about the Shadowfell. Go ahead and make whatever the pertinent role is. History, Arcana, uh, or Religion. Whichever one you'd like to roll against the DC of your library. Let's see. Now, no idea. <laughs> no idea. Um, which one was that? That was Arcana. Arcana. Okay, it's good thing is... I'm helping you out, though. Oh, uh, well, well, that's uh, true. That actually... is there. Then yeah, you can go ahead and roll that it... with advantage. Okay. Because Elder is also better. researching. Team research. <laughs> <laughs> Make the same roll, but for either religion or history. Uh, do you want to uh, do this I'll, one, Elder? I'll, I'll do this one. Yeah, I'll help you with history. <laughs> I'm uh, with histories. Yeah, I know it's history. There you go. Nice. There we go. Eldov, while you're researching, you have the niggling suspicion that you've heard the name Dominos before. And you're not sure from where. Like, you know it was somewhere in your upbringing, but you didn't pay a lot of attention uh, in class, you, your mind was always wandering. You never thought of anybody but yourself. Actually, I'm I'm totally trained in history. I paid a lot of attention to history. <laughs> but the bits, just the name of it, puts you on the right track. Um, and you start flipping through Terran's library, and you start putting facts together, putting pieces together, cross-referencing with some things you just happen to know about, like, bits and pieces of lore about the Shadowfell you've picked up, myths and legends and whatnot. And you st put together the story of a cult years and years ago, several, several. human generations at least, um, to the god Kimosh, and how the powers that be at the time, including some of the high houses of Dunfoss, were seeking out members of this cult and bringing them for ju bringing them to justice for the crime of uh, being members of a horrible death cult. And so many of these cultists made a pilgrimage to the mountains. Very, very deep in the mountains. Uh, very far to the uh, to the east of Ker Tyrell. And it describes a place that is Kimosh's domain. It describes a horrible place filled with shadow where there is no light, zombies roam the earth, etc., etc. And that all sounds kind of far-fetched to you. So you cross-reference it with some of the stuff you know about the Shadowfell, and you realize what it's describing is a shadow crossing, a place where the two planes touch, where you can move from the Prime Material into the Shadowfell. And what you learn is the location of such a crossing deep in the mountains. Somewhere here-ish. All right. I'll call Terran over and I'll say, hey, look at this. Huh. Interesting. And you learn, when the two of you put your heads together and you get a lead, 
you find several other shadow crossings um, in the area. One of which is said to be. Uh, let's put one under Garrett, and that, that amuses me to do so. <laughs> um, most of them deep in the underdark, obviously. But a couple of them on the surface. The nearest one would be this one here I just marked. A little bit south is Razak. So that explains have... the, the. It explains the what? Oh, the really lost him. I was going to say, that out. explains the missing undead that were in that tunnel. <laughs> But yeah, you have two the locations. Shadow. There's supposedly a secret crypt in or around the town of Garretton, and there's supposed to be... Um, it just describes sharp, rocky, cragged area where sunlight very seldom touches deep in the mountains south of Zrezak. These two places are said to be shadow crossings. Also, I will go talk to Locke again, because I have finally decided upon a boon. Very well. Very well. Do you drink? Does Eldov need to assist you with that too? No. Does he have to shake your wiener when you pee? <laughs> the last few drops is he offering out? me a boon? He's not offering <laughs> you crap. So you go talk to Locke. And after again. I got those eyes for him with my mage hand. <laughs> and he welcomes you back. And he says, I must confess, Terran, that I will be glad when you and your companions are underway again. Unfortunately. My dear friend Fila hasn't come to visit once since you've been back. <laughs> Odd that. <laughs> Taren doesn't care. He just doesn't. I know. <laughs> you can try to get them to pursue this plotline. Not gonna happen. <laughs> I know, it's just never gonna happen. So what do you ask of Locke? Uh, I've decided upon what I need in order to uh, to pursue the rest of this this. Uh, you know, this quest, I don't really like calling it as big and flowery, this sort of thing that, you know, the appointed lord anoints on somebody, and they have a chaplain, and it's it's just crazy. It's just dirty work that has to get done. I'm the sort of person that actually does it. Um, I need to be able to stand in the front line and actually not die, which has in the past proven to be a bit of a hindrance. So, uh, permanent stone, stone skin. Permanent stone skin. Which is the boon of resilience. Okay. And Locke sits back in his chair for a moment and says, This is a tall order. This is a very powerful boon you ask of me. I know. He says, And we <laughs> believe this to be fair payment for a job left partially incomplete. Done to the best of the ability of your servants not to trigger their disintegration collars. He nods. He says, yes, I agree. And he stands. And he holds out his hand. And as he does, the illusion that surrounds him, that makes him look like a mortal, vanishes from his elbow forward. He this holds is the out. point where Taryn realizes, oh yeah, everyone normally sees this. I should really tell Fila. <laughs> he holds out the horrific claw of his true pit fiend form. And you feel your skin harden all around you. You feel your whole body. For a moment, it kind of overtakes you. Um kind of unable to breathe and unable to move for a moment as you feel like you're encased in stone. But that feeling subsides after a few a few moments. And Locke says, there you are. Very well. May your boon serve you. Taran will nod and curtly leave. Oh, uh, I reach into my pack and pull out the first envelope. Okay. Is it, uh, is there any, like, indication that this has been, you know, done, or is no magic and it's just, like, still the same? No, just an envelope. Just a proposal. Okay. Do you want to say it burns into flame? Is that what you're wanting? <laughs> I was expecting something like that, but who knows? As the feeling subsides, and as you reach in to pull out the envelope, when you look at him again, 
you're not sure if it's a trick of the light or what, but you can no longer see his fiendish form. You only see the human lock standing there. <clears throat> and this feeling takes hold in your brain that you can't be sure that he was ever a fiend. You get the very, very strong suspicion that you've been wrong about Locke all along. Uh-oh. <laughs> that seems fine. Mm. Huh. Nothing to be not... worried about. Uh, on my way downstairs, I'll cast a quick invisibility on myself. Can I not see myself, or does the see-through illusion still work? Well, as you leave, Locke says, and next time you see Fila, tell her to come up. And you were just, you seem, this is a very reasonable proposal. You see no reason why that would be untoward at all. Okay. You go downstairs, cast invisibility, and no, you, you I mean, you can, you know you're there. You well, my, down. the witch sight still works, right? I can still see through my own illusion? Oh, yeah. Yes. Okay. And the end of the week comes. Everybody reconvenes at the inn. Uh, putting together the information Orphan got with the information that Terran and Eldov researched with the information that uh, Khalil found. You now have the location of Dominas in the Shadowfell. You have the location of two shadow crossings nearby. And you know what sort of place Dominas is and what awaits you there. Yep. So for next session, is it safe to say that I should put together a Dominos yeah. adventure? No, we're going to go kill uh, Bob. Bobby Yaga. Yes. Bobby Yaga. So go. what is yeah. the plan as far as Bobby Yaga is concerned? So we're, we're totally going to kill Bobby Yaga, right? Oh, I mean, yeah. in, in terms, in terms of me planning stuff, what what is the party's Who, plan with Bobby Yaga? Who's we? Because Orphan just wants to open Everyone but Orphan. Um, uh, Taryn wants to use the opportunity to use her hunt as travel hut for travel to investigate the place a bit further, but yeah, he's totally down for smashing that hourglass and smashing Bobby Yaga to pieces. But my Eric question, wants his damn quarterstaff back. I'm, I'm working under the assumption that yes, we're going to go back and kill Bobby Yaga. My, que my plan... question is, like, what is the actual plan for doing so? Are you just going to go back and openly defy her? Are you going to try to trick her? Are you going to wait until the end of the three months, and then once everything is over, take it from there? I think I think that Baba Yaga is looking like... And, I mean, this is just my thought, is that we're going after the ribs, and then assuming three months isn't almost up, we're going after Gindred, and then finally we're going back to Baba Yaga and going, yeah, fuck you. And then, then smashing her with our hopefully even more increased powers. So yeah, it, that sounds good to me. The plan is just to go back and say, yeah, we had a deal with you, but we're going back on that because we hate you and want to kill you. I still say, by the letter of the deal, we have three months to do whatever we want. It's only after <laughs> the three months that we have to leave in peace. Darren doesn't really care that he made a deal with her. But again, not he's not lawful at all. Right. Okay. Yeah, Zeke's pretty chaotic, so he's down with because he wants to he wants to save the the little girl whether she wants to or wants it or not. And she won't. Baba Yaga basically said, "Please try to weasel out of the deal." When she told us that story about the the one week. Yeah. 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 Oh, I fully expect her to fuck us first. Yeah. Hey, um, Eldov, can you cast reverse gravity? Uh, I can learn it. <clears throat> I have now, gravity if, bombs. Do you want one of those? <laughs> if Baba Yaga does go back in her deal, uh, like at any time before the session is over, then Orphan will help. But she believes in, in upholding the deal that she made. So, does anybody... Like, if Daniel doesn't have a reason to stay, he's not going to. So, the question is, do you guys make any moves to attempt to get Daniel on board? Um, can uh... we... I, I would at least ask him how he can be contacted, although I guess Terran can do that at any time. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to know where he's going. He would, he's probably going to be dead before we ever get to Baba Yaga. No, he tells you that he realizes that he himself uh, is not able to fulfill the terms of his quest as an individual, so he his intention is to walk the land in search of allies who can help him. That sounds fantastic. Yeah. Why don't we tell him to keep that... Why don't we tell him 
if he's planning on walking that land, he ain't going to find anyone to go after a Baba Yaga anytime soon, I don't think. I say we just keep in touch with him and give him a sending when we're ready to go <clears throat> break shit. Well, if he wants to assemble people that are interested in doing it, I mean, we've already got potential adventurers that are in. Like, we've got the group we sent to the tower. We've got a level 2 wizard. Uh, we're not bringing uh, Cube to kill Bobby Yaga. Terran, no, we're definitely not doing that. Zook, and Orphan, throw me a whiz 10, but just you three. Okay. I know what this is for. Hey, Terran made it. Would you would you like to say it? <laughs> yeah, Khalil. Oh no, I'm just, this is just my this is my theory. No, no, look, let's hear it. Let's hear it. <laughs> that the Daniel is probably from another world, just like Terran Zook and. Orkin. Oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Gendred can't get him. That's right. Plus, he's a dragonborn, which yep. Trennis no has one else a, in this world. Yes. No. Yeah. Trennis does not have dragonborn, which means. <sighs> He would be considered a monster everywhere. Maybe we should is. maybe we should uh, give him a little culture lesson and ask him if you'd like wouldn't mind staying in the inn and imply heavily that we might be taking care of Baba Yaga later. Why don't we just take care of Baba Yaga next session? <laughs> or we could do that. Hold um, us down. Let's do it. Yeah, turn turn's fine with that. I mean, we did get I mean, the good, the good thing about what we did is we got Terran's abilities boosted. And we got at least one more innocent out of harm's way. So I'm okay with going back in guns blazing and not considering this a waste of a session. Yeah, Terran's fine with that. <laughs> so next session, you guys want to go back to the hut and renege <laughs> on your agreement for Baba Yaga? I don't yeah. trust her. I'm, I'm glad that I have a plan for orphan downtime action because it sounds like she's going to get some. <laughs> oh, no. um, so what in, do you, what do you tell character... Daniel then if that's actually the plan you tell Daniel no we just told like I'm, I'm imagining you guys say, oh no we just told her that because we didn't want to throw down right there we were caught on a way well, we're definitely think, going back I think the first thing we would tell Daniel is we would kind of we would need to explain to him the nature of his status in this world and tell him you wandering around alone is a bad idea and he listens intently and he thinks very carefully but in the end he says the strength of Bahamut will carry me over any obstacles in my way. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, Except and then we... the hut. Yeah, and then... He says, what are you talking then... about? He says, Bobby Yaga... Or, Bobby Yaga. Bahamut sent you to rescue me in my time of need. He says, the Lord did provide. Is Bahamut worshipped in this world? Um, no. I let you... Zoo can orphan make that religion check, but nobody else. So okay. Bahamut is not because if anybody would know Bahamut in this world, it would be Eldov, and he, I didn't let him get that check. <laughs> so and then and then we can tell him like, are we really going to do this next session? Is that the plan? I guess if we want to keep him from going out and getting himself killed, then next session is probably the time to do it. Yeah. Turns all for it. Okay. I mean, in character, Zuka is all about doing whatever. I mean, he's he's down for a fight if if Terran's going that way. <laughs> so what is out of character? I don't know if that's the best plan, but <laughs> let's spend some time then putting together an actual plan of attack for going back to the hut and waging the war on Baba Yaga. Like, where are you envisioning this fight going down? Are you envisioning going back under the pretense of using the hut for something? Yep. We'll go back, we'll ask her to bring us to the Shadowfell, where we wanted to go, to this uh, terrible city. And then she'll either have to leave to use the controls, or if they, she just ha makes it happen, it just happens. That, that'd be a shame. Actually, can I ask you, do we know the mechanism? Like, in this week, did we figure that out? Like, how, how she behaves if we go back to the hut? Nobody went back there. Yeah, no one's well, going back there. Yeah. He ha he hand waved travel, and said you could you you could have used her hut during this period. That's why I was That's asking. True. Khalil That's knows true. the we answer do. to that question. What Khalil was told was that Baba Yaga did whatever she had to do to get you all out of the hut and out of her hair because she yeah. truly <laughs> feared that you were more powerful in aggregate as she was. Yeah. Yeah. 
Like we 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 put her on the defensive. Like suddenly when we when we kicked the tar out of all of her minions, that she that she realized that she wasn't she wasn't tangling with the usual adventurers who would who she'd just throw in a dungeon until she felt she, until she was got she got. Well, yeah, when she started playing nice, that should have been our cue to just pummel her. <laughs> Uh, like I said, that whole banquet, I was waiting for the fight to start. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> me too. I was waiting for the fight to start, and I was thinking of loopholes and what you guys were agreeing with, and I wasn't saying shit. This I, is why I had her stats on screen the whole time. This is why the mind why? link not being private sucks. <laughs> yeah, I gotta be I, like well, I was ready to di like I was holding the staff in my hand, and I was gonna discharge that thunderbolt or whatever it was. <laughs> I was at I was full so... power and knock her back. Uh, I was gonna start asking her about everyone, flump, so really have done that. and then stare at the captain and say, "What do you know about the flump?" <laughs> Since we always go on flump, <laughs> so, I really thought about that. We're like that group of adventurers, like, "Oh, we're gonna go fuck her up. We're gonna go fuck her up." And then when it's finally time to fuck her up, we're like, "Uh, no, we can go fuck her up right now. We can fuck her up right now." So, what's the actual battle plan? I'm assuming you guys are gonna spend some time putting together an actual plan of attack. Like, you don't. Or is the idea just to show back up at the hut and wing it? No, I think we should at least get inside the we hut. We should trick her, is what we should ultimately do. Okay. Uh, trick her how? Because, no, you don't, you don't actually know the mechanism by which the hut moves or is controlled. Yeah, so we need to be able to know how to operate that thing before we... Uh, you could, uh... This is sort of crazy, in. but we could ask her to bring it to the ethereal plane. To what end? No, that's a pl terrible plan. Because you, I want to. It's like calling her. Like, see how does she panic? Does she? Do the worms crush the hut? Like, <laughs> and I'll be just like, that's our agreement. Is we have control over the hut. It's sitting in the ethereal plane for the next three months. Is that actually what you're doing? I don't know. I like the. More I kind of like that think plan. I'm not gonna lie. I can plane shift all of us back. If we just if Eldov teleports us out of the hut, I can plane shove all of us back out of the ethereal. And Zook I can is not crazy about ethereal anything. And Eric, as a as a backup, <laughs> can do plane uh, something with plans. Yeah, you can plane shift too. Yeah, I think I can plane shift. I do. I can plane shift. Orphan, oh, super boy. glad she's not going along for this. <laughs> so is, is Orphan? Orphan is openly saying no. We made a deal, so we're not. She's not going back that's, on it. That's all Orphan has been saying, like, in character for the, for the past. Well, I mean, so my thought is if we do that, like, she'll have to go back on the deal. Like, it's it's calling her bluff, right? She will not let her hut, her hut be destroyed if I say I want it on the ethereal plane for three months to do research. Alright. There's, There's your pretext. Orphan, Orphan is lawful and she's not good, so she's not down with this. <laughs> <laughs> So you're going to tell her, we're going to trick her into uh, bringing the hut to the ethereal under the pretense that she knows how dangerous it is, it is in this area, and that she'll refuse to do it, at which point you will consider the contract broken, and then you're At what point we'll just kick her ass? <laughs> that's, Orphan, yeah. that's the Orphan's not at all of. convinced by any of these loopholes in the agreement. <laughs> no, these are, these are loopholes that, like, we're... This, is, this, this whole thing about, like, Oh, she's gonna be breaking the deal because we're gonna ask her to, to uh, to leave your hut on the ethereal plane for three months. It's like, no, that's something we're doing to you. <laughs> do you want? So, do you want her to trap death? Because I'm fine with <laughs> just destroying the hut too. Like, end of the day, Terran will leave the hut on the ethereal plane and plane shift out with his allies. And, and then that as Orphan your deal with uh, as Orphan with and Lott. Terran and eh? Eldov and Khalil has some conflict over the exact terms of the deal and who broke what. Exasperated, Daniel just interrupts and says, And this is what comes of treachery and deception. Wield an open blade or do not wield it. Orphan, orphan nods to him. It's like, Daniel has it exactly right. If you're going to break the contract, go in there and break it, but don't pretend that she's the one who broke it first. Will you come with us if we're going to do that? No. He said, I will stand outside of the hut and declare my intention to come in there and take her head. I will declare it openly. I would say the words in every room in that place. From her darkest cells. And he looks over at Terran. And especially at Terran. And then 
a sideward glance to Eric and Eldov. Says your deception has bought you nothing. I'm inclined to agree at this point. <laughs> we did get that little hedgehog girl out of there, though. What was done with Ilya, by the way? I thought we just she's put her on the end. She's put her yeah, on the end for now. Put her on a diet of salad and uh, light exercise. <laughs> <laughs> put her on a diet. Okay. We'll deal with Ilya I mean, after this because I, I want to keep track of Ilya too. Yeah, that's right, because she's going to be falling under the same circumstances as as uh, Daniel. Daniel yeah. says oh. that if he must go along with this farce in order to complete his holy quest, if this is the only means by which he's able to bring justice to Baba Yaga, that he'll do it. But very grudgingly, and with the understanding that this was the wrong way to go about it. He says, he he says if he knew at the time that your plan was to break your word, that he would have started the fight at the banquet. He would have been the first to draw his blade. He thought you all were being truthful in negotiating uh, terms, which is why he reacted with disappointment. Or, Orphan Wolf speaks up and says, um, and I feel the same way, Captain. If you had said something about what you wanted, about what you wanted to do, I would have followed you. You know that I'll follow you anywhere. No, I but, just. But I, we made a deal, and I'm not going back on it. The problem was there's no way for us to discuss between ourselves without Baba Yaga listening. Ultimately, I would have preferred to just get into a quiet corner take a vote, and then probably, from the sound of things, just run her through. And I'm sorry, that was my fault. I'm t I've maybe become a little bit too reliant on my otherworldly powers at this point. He said, talking to a room full of people who are over-reliant on otherworldly powers. <laughs> I resist every damage type now. <laughs> uh, Elda does not use any otherworldly powers. Because whatever world he's in, there are powers from that world. <laughs> Luke is just stroking his slightly gray beard. Eltov is kind of frustrated at Orphan because he thinks it's it's perfectly lawful to be breaking this agreement because that's what she, Baba Yaga would do. She told that story about how she tried to find a loophole in any agreement she was in. Well, she told the story about how she uh, specifically <laughs> tricked a lawful fiend because she wanted to give him a taste of his own medicine. Yeah. Are you here arguing with us, Brickroot? I'm clarifying what Baba Yaga <laughs> said at the, the dinner. That's not the way I see it. I don't want you guys to make I'm a decision based on unclear information. Hmm. I mean, if you're really concerned about the lock part, I can just tell him, hey, well, I'm probably going to destroy the hut, so you should go through it today. It takes two problems out of my hair. <laughs> so right now the plan is to yeah. to spring this ethereal plane trap. Terran, no, that's, I think, that's the best Terran could think of. I think the plan I mean. right now is just to get inside the hut and then to start a fight somewhere. If we can get the chicken foot away from her, that's that's better. If Eldov had his druthers, well, now you mentioned the chicken foot. What's your plan to get the chicken foot away from her? Because that is the key I... to her teleportation. Zook, do you think you can do that? If I, especially if I cast Foresight on you? What does Foresight do? It <laughs> lets you see through time. <laughs> what, what does that... You get character. the Monado power. What does power. that mechanically actually let me do? You have advantage on everything. Enemies have disadvantage to attack you. You can't be surprised. You have the Monado. <laughs> um... I already get advantage on stealth checks if I'm not using all of my. If I'm using less than half of my movement, well, I don't it wouldn't you need be to be a stealth check. You just it need, would to walk, be a just need someone check. else to distract her, and then you just get close enough to her to snatch it off her body. Right. Yeah, it, it wouldn't be a stealth check. check. It would be a slight attack. Oh, well, all, de all dex checks. All dex checks. But yeah. Um, I and then you have to keep it away from her, which is another reason I want to put. I want to buff you. Oh no, that's fine. I will totally take that. Um, <laughs> if we get into a situ, if we can figure out a way to get into a situation where I would have enough time to get that close to her, then I could try to make the sleight of hand. Now, um, from what I saw observing her, do I have any reason to believe I have any idea where she has this chicken foot? The for her four lieutenants, you know, there are five chicken feet, and her four lieutenants carried it on their person. You also know that the chicken feet 
are what allow you to teleport around inside the hut, and you have witnessed Baba Yaga teleport at will inside the hut. When I saw her teleport at will inside the hut, did she cast a spell to do so? She did. She cast the spell teleport. Does she... The devil well, did, not, saying, but she, did not, but Baba Yaga herself did. Like, I'm assuming in order to do a sleight of hand to take a chicken foot from her, I have to know, like, where I'm reaching. Like, does she have... That's what I'm getting at. Like, does, Yeah, does, pickpocket doesn't steal things until he's cased the uh, the mark. Oh, yeah, you, have you'll, have to, you'll have to case her. You'll have to try to fi- excuse me, figure out where she carries it. Or, again, I, you'll have... You'll literally have advantage on everything, so... Maybe a little glimpse through time, you'll see. Okay, so here's the thing. If we're going in, um, I will. If, if we're going in with the intention of taking her, then yeah, that can be my duty. It okay. can absolutely be something I try to do with the understanding that that's still going to be like pickpocketing, a, even with my abilities, pickpocketing a uh, high level sorcerer <laughs> may be quite difficult. <laughs> um, the now, other thing is, to be clear, it takes she, a minute to cast and she, it won't last between doors. That's true. And Baba Yaga is not a sorcerer. She's a wizard. Wizard. Let's Sorry. Be clear, let's be clear about this. What I, I, the reason I say that is because that means she has weaknesses that sorcerers don't. If you were wise enough to see them. You're just it's, saying that we should take a spellbook. I'm not. I'm just saying she's not a sorcerer. I'll just roll a whiz ten. <laughs> okay, go ahead. We should take your spellbook. Go ahead, roll whiz ten. We should take your spellbook. <laughs> First, she's a, roll. She's a wizard, not a sorcerer. <laughs> so okay. Eldov had mentioned a minute ago about uh, fighting her somewhere. If Eldov had his druthers, where would that fight take place? Like, where in the hut do you think, think is should... advantageous? Um, <laughs> pretty much anywhere. Like I don't anywhere that she can't summon the things of the hut against us. Okay. Well, you were told by Questrix, uh, her most powerful monsters that she kept in the hut, and you've dispatched them all, essentially. Yeah. The oh, only I have to ones, give Questrix back his staff. The, the only ones that haven't been dealt with are the golems that Questrix mentioned, that were in the reception hall with you. Right, basically anywhere, anywhere besides, but the reception hall. Yeah, I think anywhere but... Yeah. And that's part of the reason why that, that room spooked me. I was, like, not crazy about the idea of starting a fight there. Yeah, that's probably not the yeah. best idea. That's also where her throne is. Okay. And who knows if I mean, again, I think... Well, oh, I don't know. I mean, in Terran's mind, there's the, no better plan than to at least make her move the hut a few times and uh, see if the mechanics, see if she has to go into a more isolated place or a place she'd be better suited to. I mean, we did make the deal, and even if we're going back on it, uh, there, we, we gained nothing if we don't at least use it to get a little bit more information before we attack her. Okay. Okay, so you guys don't necessarily want to make any effort to get her to a particular place in the hut. You don't really care where the showdown takes place, just not in the wait, reception hall. Wait one second. Okay. I have an idea. Uh oh. Is this as good as my ethereal plane idea? It's that one's pretty good. similar to, but way better. Oh, okay. I have an idea too. I wonder if it's the same as Eldev's. I, I am checking to see if a spell has a vocal component, and it does. Assuming that she cannot say spells without a, a vocal component. We should push her into a teleport to an opened observatory where she will not be able to cast fly because there's no air in there and she can't speak. Um, the... so just send her into fucking space. <laughs> <laughs> the mechanics of the observatory are weird. You have to like sit down in that chair to get the door open. Anybody could be <laughs> standing in that chair. We could leave anyone in that chair. Uh, the other problem with that is she might still have a lung full of air. Like you'd actually, there's if there's no to... air, there's no travel. Like, the words won't come from your mouth. But if I have my, if my lungs are full of air and you throw me into a void, I might be able to speak the spell. I don't know. We can I test start it. suffocating. We should test it. You're right. How do you test it? Oh uh, underwater. Uh -huh. Oh my god! I cannot so, believe this is happening. I, I want a description of what is actually happening. Magical science <laughs> is happening today, people. <laughs> Turn, well, all right, let's go to the nearest lake or river. Oh, there's a pond nearby we established. Yep. All right, Eric, Eric, you need to come along on this one. <laughs> Have a water it, breathing spell ready, not a, uh, not, and a heal, but also water breathing. Khalil will, will make himself comfortable on a tree 
yeah. light up his pipe and just watch this nonsense. Unfold. Yeah, we're, we're breaking the laws of nature. You might not want to come. She's not going to go all on the raid, but she is going to watch this. Oh, Zook is on a like a tree that's like hanging over the pond so that he can kind of look down at this nonsense. You want all right. So uh, Terran's going to get a fairly large rock, larger than he would be able to swim with, tie okay. it around his waist. All right, Eldov, telekineticist me above the pool. And don't tell me when you're going to drop me. I'm just going to take halfway a Halfway through breath. that thing, I drop him into the fucking water. <laughs> <laughs> and then I try and cast Misty Step to get out. Give me one second here. <laughs> <laughs> so, Terran. <laughs> you're... <laughs> Oh. You have Khalil and Orphan triple check the bonds, lashing you to this rock, as you go to pull your fucking Harry Houdini routine. Elda picks up the rock, and you say, okay, now, I don't want you to tell me when you're going to do it, but I want you to do and then as soon as that happens, Elda fucking flings the rock into the lake. <laughs> what could go wrong with this plan? And you go flying into the lake. The rock sinks to the bottom, and you're dragged down with it. And as soon as you realize what's happened, you attempt to cast the spell Misty Step, which has only a verbal component. Yep. And as far as I can see, Misty Step allows you to teleport 30 feet. Okay. And though you're underwater, you speak the spell, and you see the bubbles come out of your mouth, and then you Misty Step out of the lake, back onto the shore. And the rock and rope sink, never to be seen again. <laughs> I don't no, know if that that's inclusive. We might need to try in space. <laughs> Do you have it in space to try with? Because I'll try it. I can't control space. <laughs> you don't have razor lower space? No. So that was enlightening. So you I don't know what I just watched. <laughs> might need those silence spell. I know I, we talked about this the last time we... Thought we'd fight spellcasters and it didn't really work, but maybe a silence spell. I, I automatically know the silence, so sure, it's some sort of last last ditch effort. The problem is that with a silence spell, you lock out everyone else's spellcasting. No, Oops. that's not the problem. The problem is that with a silent spell, it's only going to last for so long. Well, I mean, how long is so long? Uh, well, it's <laughs> a twenty foot radius. Yep. And you can't move the radius. So she's just gonna float off a little bit and then save a spell. What if you hold her with telekinesis inside the silence? If I'm holding her with telekinesis inside the silence, why are we using space at all? <laughs> I wasn't even talking about using space. Why would you need silence in space? Because no one can hear you scream. So I'm gonna go down the list real quick. Orphan, you have no opinion, yes? You're you're out of no, it? I'm, you don't want anything I'm not gonna, gonna be there. Eric. Erickson. What's your ideal plan for taking down Baba Yaga? If you had to summarize uh, and give me an elevator pitch, how would you go about doing it? Um, I... Uh, <laughs> wow. Huh. I haven't thought about that that far. Okay, Khalil, what about, what's your idea? What's your um, ideal battle against Bobby Yaga? What does it look like? Somewhere, uh, ramped, where she can't, uh, she can't maneuver, outmaneuver us. Um, somewhere where she can't... Like, where in the hut are you yeah. envisioning? Skeleton closets? We'll go back to the skeleton closets, it was pretty uh, Nope. Nope. I'm thinking we should get her in one of those tiny little prisons that are in the guest rooms, where she can't do anything. No, I, that seems like <laughs> a bad idea. I'm thinking... But something like that. Yeah. So, Zook, what's your ideal... Like, you already... We're talking about uh, pickpocketing the chicken foot off of her. Obser right, observing so... her long enough to know where she keeps it, and then lifting it off her so she can't teleport away. Right, so as far as Zook is concerned, he's he's thinking about this in terms of his role. So his thought is that he would go in, he would they would they would uh, try to say, hey, we want to go to the ethereal plane, or we want to go to wherever we want to go. Okay, and then watch what she does afterwards. See if I can deduce where this chicken foot thing is, or if, you know if she's got pockets on her or what have you, and then. 
I don't know, on Flump, have Terran cast uh, his spell on me, I go for the chicken foot, and then as soon as I got it off her, or even just after I attempt to get it off her, everyone else attacks her. Okay. But as far as location, he only knows he doesn't want to be near those damn glass golems. And Terran, uh, what is what is your like, ideal battle? He, he wants, and he specifies not, and not an innocent either. So the candy orchard would be out. Okay. Anywhere near anyone who's be innocent is out. Um, Terran's ideal battle would take place in a shifting mirror scape where she plans to trap death and throw her into her own mirror. Ooh, okay. okay. Well, what, what, do you, what say you, Eldov? Uh, anywhere that I can be for at least a couple seconds before she shows up so that I can cast Telekinesis without her counterspelling me. Okay. So that way you could have it up to use it on her? Yeah, so that I can have it up to use it on her. Okay. And then, um... The, the, the whole Telekinesis and Silence trick seems... seems like a good idea. We just Telekinesis her, hold her, and then hit her hard and fast. Okay. So, piecing together what I heard, the strategy is going to be to go in there under false pretenses. Tell her you want to use the hut to go somewhere. Possibly park it on the ethereal or wherever. Give Zook enough time to find out where her portal key is uh, and lift it off her without her knowing. Give Eldov enough time to prepare his telekinesis trap and then attempt to use the element of surprise to catch her unawares and do this in a place where harm will not come to any of her prisoners. And if That's possible, good. do it in a place where she can be thrown into her own death trap. Oh, that, I, I don't know where that is. I don't much like that plan because I'm guessing that she knows her death trap better than we do. Okay. 